Welcome everyone to the Taxist Accountants Business Support Webinar. Um, I'm joined today with me, I've got Darren Moore to my side, who's uh, going to be going through all of the different uh, announcements that the government's been making. Afternoon. Um, thank you very much. So I'm James Mattam, I'm the Group Business Development Director for Taxist Accountants. And Taxist, as you may know, are a network of independent accountants who are looking after small business owners and the self-employed, landlords and taxpayers right across the UK. We've got 77,000 clients who we're helping through this uh, current pandemic. And again, we have a number of you joining us. We're not sure yet whether you are clients of ours, and we're more than happy to help as many people as we possibly can at this time. So the topics we're going to be going through today um, are primarily... <coughs> Primarily, we're going to look through the uh, survey results, which we'll do towards the end of this session. But there have been a number of announcements over the weekend, and we felt it was more important at this time to cover those off, which Darren's going to kindly do for us. So our hot topic at the moment is bounce back loans. Uh, very important, that's all got launched today, and the application system is now open. Um, we've got an update for you on the self-employed income support scheme. We've got some further updates on local government grants and the funded schemes that's happening there. We've got some updates on furloughing and also another hot topic, any updates that we can have for small company directors uh, that are slipping through the gaps at this time. Um, towards the end, we will cover off the survey results, but we'll also email those results to you um, so you can see the responses and how that survey panned out. And then at the end, hopefully we'll get through as many questions uh, as time allows. So uh, without further ado, I'll hand over to Darren. James, thank you. Um, so James has set the scene there, really. It has been, after a couple of weeks of really waiting for things to come out, as is often the case, we've had a number of things that have come out in relatively quick succession. So it has been a, a busy few days. So we're probably slightly more biased towards technical content day, today than we planned. <clears throat> But there's a lot there, so we thought we'd try and cover off what are some really important announcements, actually, in terms of small businesses in particular. So we'll start with Bounce Back Loans, which is, as it says on the slide, it's a new scheme, and you will have probably seen this has had a fair bit of, of press coverage over the last week. So this was announced by the Chancellor last Monday. Um, unexpected, I think, but very welcome nevertheless. And what it was seen to be doing is to respond to an awful lot of pressure there really around some concerns over the existing loan schemes, which is the Coronavirus Business Interruption Loan Scheme, or C-Bills. That's been around for a while, but that was seen to, to have some, some gaps and some challenges, particularly around how you applied a successful application and time. So this is seen as a response to that, to be something that's really geared up for small businesses in particular. And it, what it's designed to be is, is very simple in terms of how it works, um, very affordable, uh, and very speedy in response. And I'll talk about those things as I go through slides because this is really quite a radical idea um, and something that could well have significant impact for many. So it's gonna be delivered through a scheme of accredited lenders. Uh, at the moment, we're not entirely sure how many. Uh, the CBIL scheme has got 40 something at the moment. As, as it stands, there are, I think, 12 lenders that have gone on to the, um, the various sites out there. That will grow over time, we think, uh, logically. Uh, it's important to know it's a business loan, not a personal loan. I'll come back to that a bit later because that's an important distinction. Uh, and the application process, as James has mentioned, was today. And early indicators are that there have been a huge amount of applications going through already. Um, it seems to be holding up the site, but it is proven to be enormously popular, which we can understand. And as we go through the slides, hopefully we'll see what we think. So that's an overview. Start with eligibility. So who's eligible? Um, most small businesses probably, and you can see some of the criteria up there. I'll just quickly go through them. So um, businesses must be established or carrying on a business is how they word it. Now we're taking that to mean training, that would make sense, uh, and established before the 1st of March of this year. Um, available to those impacted by COVID-19, and there's various different ways you could be impacted per the, per the rules. Um, not available to businesses funded by the C-Bill system. So if you've already got a loan with C-Bills, you may be excluded. Saying that, if your C-Bills loan is less than £50,000, you can flip over into this scheme. And there may be some good reasons for doing that as we come on to. You must be a UK business or tax resident in the UK. 
Um, can't be in difficulty, I'll come back to that because that's quite important. Um, more than 50% of business income must be derived from trading. That's, again, still to be defined. That probably means as distinct from investment income. So we're looking primarily at trading businesses here. And loan must be used for economic benefit to the business, not for personal purposes. That's going to be, that's going to be important for many in terms of what you can do with the funds. So um, a, lot of, a lot of the small businesses out there that have been talking to our network will be eligible for this funding, we suspect, off the back of that criteria. So if we move on, we'll have a look at just some quick definitions. So businesses in difficulty, I mentioned this. This, um, this is a relatively short list of businesses that can't apply. Um, individuals with companies in insolvency proceedings, um, that makes sense. This is about viable businesses. Um, some criteria around some numbers. I won't go through the numbers in detail. You can see them up there. So limited companies and partnerships will both be restricted if they've got a history of losses versus the amount of share capital capital in their partnership. That's a question for your accountants, for your accountant really. And that's based on the latest annual accounts. Um, and it will exclude businesses less than three years old, which is, which is good to see because that's a recognition that early stage businesses generally have losses early on. So that shouldn't mean that newish or early stage businesses are excluded, which is necessarily good to see. So business difficulty um, will be something that will need to be considered when applying. Uh, if we just move on, um, how to apply. So as it stands for today, um, the British Business Bank has got accredited lenders, as the Seabrook system has. Um, as I said earlier, 12 at the time of drafting slides, but we expect that to grow substantially over the next couple of days. The application process involves going through your uh, through a lender. So it's not done through the British Business Bank, it's done through a lender. Um, and there's a short application form, a couple of pages with questions, mostly self-declaration. Um, we've been through it, have a look at it, 15 to 20 minutes uh, on average we think to do. So it's, it's, it's a pretty simple process. There is some follow-up, but it's a pretty simple process. Um, as I say, it's applied to the lenders and the suggestion is that you start with your current provider first. Um, now that makes sense because they know you and there'll be some track record there and things like uh, identification and, and money laundering procedures, but the, the compliance hoops that lenders need to go through will be easier if you're an existing customer. But of course, if, you're, if your bank or funder is not represented there, then you'll need to look at an alternative and you can apply to any of the accredited lenders if you need to. So you're not restricting that respect. It's just easier to go through your current provider first with it. The scheme is open for some time, actually. Um, it's open until 3rd of November 2020, so plenty of time to apply. Um, it is seen as a short-term response to the current crisis, but there's a fair window there of opportunity. The government maintains the right to extend. So it could well be that, depending on the success of this, it's extended. Um, our expectation is, as I said earlier, lots of applications fairly early on because it will be seen as relevant to many. You can apply between 2,000 and 50,000. The next point is really important, capping. It's capped at 25% of turnover. I've set up there, no definition as yet on how turnover is measured, but it may be clear through the application process. This is all being done very quickly. This guidance all came out either this morning or over the weekend. Having looked through the application process, turnover is measured based on either <clears throat> the 2019 results, if you've got a full year, or your expected results for a full year if you've begun trading since the 1st of November, uh, January 1999, uh, sorry, 2019. So that should give people a way to calculate turnover. The, the cap of 25% is important because obviously it may limit how much you can borrow. But it's going to be uh, particularly important to those early stage businesses. If you've not built up a track record of turnover, if you started trading in the last 12 months, there will be an estimate there. If you've had a full year for 2019, your income may be relatively low, which may limit the amount you can apply for. That's difficult for new businesses who are already hard pushed, of course, but I can understand why they put a cap in somewhere. <clears throat> so that's how much you can apply for. That's clear if you go through the application process, there's some questions around that. And then timing wise, it was designed to be quick and simple, uh, as I said earlier. Um, it is. It is, in theory, something that can take a few days, we've been advised, or the government has advised. But it's worth bearing in mind, obviously this is subject to assessment by the lenders. The lenders are being encouraged by the government to take out 
a relatively light touch approach to this, but it has been subject to much debate. So we should see, um, you may get asked more information, even if it's your existing funder, they may ask for tax return information and that sort of thing, perhaps. Uh, too early to say as yet how often that will take place. And there's a big question mark on our part in terms of how the banks will cope with this. Their, their formal credit procedures for C-bills lending took some time, that was part of the problem. This is light to touch, deliberately so. But if you've got tens of thousands of applications going in very quickly, which we suspect will be the case, we're yet to see how banks are going to cope with this and how, how selective they may be, how many follow-up questions there may be. We'll, we'll try to get more information on that over time through our normal channels, which we'll talk about later. But this is a big ask of the banks, actually. Um, I, we can understand the need and we can understand why the government is encouraging, but this is all being pulled together in the space of a week. So the banks have had relatively little time to respond. So we'll have to wait and see how long that actually takes in practice. But it is an attractive scheme, as we've talked about. So in some of the key terms, fixed six year term, um, six years probably makes sense in terms of a year of grace of payments plus five years, so I'll come on to. Uh, early repayment is allowed with no fees charged, no early repayment penalties at all. Government will cover interest for the first 12 months under a separate scheme and there are no repayments at all for businesses in the first 12 months. So no capital, no interest, and no interest accruing because government is meeting it for the first 12 months. An interest rate is fixed at 2.5%, which is, of course, uh, an incredibly low rate of interest compared to most out there. And certainly a lot lower than some of the Seagulls loans we've seen being put in place over the last few, week, a few weeks. So very attractive. Uh, lenders can't charge fees either, so no upfront costs. So lots of positives there. On the interest rate, it's not absolutely clear if that's for the full term or not. That's not being disclosed. But logically, government will be encouraging lenders to maintain low cost access to funding. So very attractive terms compared to what else may be out there. And how can it be used? The key line in the legislation, the application process, is used for economic benefit for the business, um, not necessarily for personal use. So it's expected to be used for working capital. It's expected to be used to support the business and not for personal purposes. Uh, it also says it can't be used for export related activity, and that's probably around, I guess, keeping wealth in the UK. But Okay, how can you use it in practice? Because some, some people will want to use this differently, I'm sure. So the first thing that I guess would be useful for some, there are no limits on the amount of the facility you can use for refinancing. So if you've got existing debt in the business, um, whatever form it may be, this may make sense for you at 2.5% with flexibility. That could make an enormous difference cash flow wise. The caveat there is it can't be used to replace existing C-bills funding uh, or coronavirus scheme funding unless it's less than 50,000 pounds, as I mentioned earlier. But actually, that's, that's probably not the first question that many are gonna ask. It's gonna be, okay, what about my own personal funds? There are, there are lots of small business owners out there, whether they're companies, partnerships, sole traders, lots and lots of people out there who are struggling cash flow wise personally. So the natural inclination of many will be, look, can I, can I put money in the business? It is a business loan, and can I take that out? Um, and the answer to that, unfortunately, is it's not clear. If you, if you read the relatively you know, limited details in the application, it would say it's for economic benefit to the business. But what does that actually mean? So opportunities, perhaps. So companies that start a company, companies can use it for refinancing, so they can reschedule debt. A company may have a director's loan account. It may owe directors money. That's fairly commonplace. Could it be used to restructure that debt to clear down a loan account balance if money's due to a director because the cash is now there? Possibly. Could it be used in a company that's got distributable reserves to pay dividends to help those hard pressed small company directors that need help? Perhaps. Could it help those with sole trades, partnerships, protect their own personal income under the, under the basis that, well, look, that has to be a benefit to my business because I'm protecting my income. I'm sustaining myself and therefore the business. That makes sense. We can see those arguments all being made. Will they be effective? That's difficult to say. Unfortunately, at this stage, there's, there's not really clarity on that. Um, we'll see how the lenders behave. We'll see how the application behaves. If you are applying as a business owner, you are self-certifying. So you have to accept that if you do go for this money, 
and you do use it for these you know, arguably personal purposes down the line, we don't know what the lenders might do. We don't know what follow-up procedures they will, they will have, what reviews they will have. It's worth bearing in mind, but we can understand the attraction. So that's one that we'll continue to watch, but it's one that I'm sure will be asked about, if not in the course of this, this webinar, but in subsequent questions. In terms of the loan itself, the good news goes on really. So protection for borrowers, it is 100% government backed. The government has been under pressure. Uh, C bills are 80% government backed. This is 100% government backed. Now that doesn't mean to say that they will repay it no matter what. The business will you know, is still liable to repay the loans, but there is that guarantee behind the scenes that should reassure the banks when they're looking at this from a risk assessment perspective. Um, and the lenders can't ask for personal guarantees, which will reassure many of you. Um, and in addition, if you're a sole trader or a partnership, yes, it's personal debt, potentially, but they cannot take, the lenders cannot take recovery action over your principal private residence or your primary personal vehicle. So in addition to no personal guarantees, there is a level of protection there for individuals around your own assets. Again, I, I, I think you'd need to look at each application in, 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 in its own merit, and you'd need to talk to your accountants potentially. But that protection is all really good news for prospective borrowers because it's very different to current options available, as I say, all very attractive. So, uh, a quick summary. Um, I've taken a bit of time to go through that, but it is, as we say, very important. This will appeal to many. If it delivers per the plans, then it's enormously valuable. Uh, and that SME sector that's under enormous pressure will benefit from this huge. Uh, and it will make a real difference, we think. Um, it is relevant for much of the UK small business market because the, the eligibility criteria are fairly widely drawn up. How will banks respond? Question mark, we don't know. They're being encouraged or forced, I guess, depending on how you look at it, to do this. Um, and we'll see how they respond and how they apply and how they deal with fund movements. I guess our bit of guidance on that will probably be to apply fairly quickly. If there is going to be enormous demand and if there are log jams building up, it's probably something you want to consider sooner rather than later. So, so think about what's out there in terms of resources. Talk to your local tax accountant. They'll all be fully versed on exactly how this scheme works. So they're a good point of contact for you to try and understand. Look at our website, uh, details on the screen. There's, there's a hub of resources there for you to look at if that's of use to you. Talk to your existing lenders or funders perhaps. They're the first port of call for applications. And they're, again, they're very well briefed in terms of how this works. So they're, they're perhaps worth talking to. And as a, as a website, there's lots of web resources out there, including our own. But if you are looking at something that's representative of the entirety of the scheme, the British Business Bank site is useful, actually. There's some really good frequently asked questions in there and some good guides that might help you. So that's another, another useful resource for you should you need it. So let's so say lots there. A really important scheme, um, but great to see actually. And something as we come onto survey results with James a bit later on, some of the some of the needs uh, suggested in the survey will have been met by this uh, new loan source. Okay. So, as if that wasn't enough, um, other news over the weekend. Many of you out there will be waiting for the new self-employed income support scheme or SEISS to come out. Um, and there was some more news on that over the weekend, and I'll go through this very quickly in the interest of time. Um, there were more details on how profits and loss could be calculated. There was some ambiguity or confusion around that, so that will help. But there was an acceleration of the scheme, which is far more important, really. It looks like that HMRC will start to contact taxpayers from now to the end, uh, to the middle of May, and they will be contacting those that are eligible. So this will happen relatively quickly, and that suggests that funds are going to be freed up far sooner than we thought. We imagined it was going to be late mid-June. It looks like it's going to be perhaps a month sooner than that. So that's hopefully good news for some of you. Um, there's also a new eligibility checker um, launched by HMRC on their website. That's, that's a good resource. In theory, you go on there, you put your UTR, your unique tax reference in, and it will tell you whether, whether they think you're eligible or not. We've seen a few already that have challenged those conclusions. There is, um, there is an appeal process there. There is a way to check the answer, but that's a really interesting one in terms of checking eligibility. That may be something you want to consider sooner rather than later. Um, the other important point is it will be taxpayers we think that we need to claim. So there's some work to do on that, and our network will be talking to their clients over the next few days around exactly that issue, because there will be some work needed there, perhaps. The other resource that might help you, this will speed up monies, we hope. 
it will give clarity and eligibility. What it won't do yet is tell you how much you can claim. That will come through the conclusion of the claim process. What you might want to do is look at our grant calculator, which will give you at least an estimate. There's some caveats there because it is an estimate, but it might give you an estimate of how much you might receive for personal planning purposes. And those grant calculators are on our website. Yeah, they're on our website. We've got a special uh, COVID-19 hub area and you should be able to access that straight, straight off the home page. You see it right at the top in the blue band. And we built that calculator out because we were worried about the self-employed wondering what they would be eligible for, even if they were, and then how would they plan to fund the short term, or would it be enough if they realised it wouldn't be enough? You know, what sort of cash flow forecast would they need to put together just to manage through this uh, difficult time? So if you if you've not got uh, an accountant, or or if you're worried and you want to speak to an accountant, come and talk to us. If you um, if you want to just use our grant calculator, just go and have a look and just get a feel for what you might be eligible for. It's yeah. going to be a useful tool to help you just know a little bit more about the uncertainty in front of you for the next uh, couple of weeks. This is a hugely important scheme. By volume, it's probably the biggest scheme that the government's announced in terms of the numbers of individuals it impacts, perhaps, uh, or certainly close to the employer related schemes anyway. Um, so it is important you get some advice on it. It is a complicated scheme. The good news here is the acceleration and the fact that it looks like money's going to be flowing, as I say, perhaps a month earlier than we imagined. So certainly worth looking at, certainly worth talking to your accountants about. And continuing with news, another example of something that came out late on Friday or over the weekend. So this is a new pot of money available. And we've talked before in previous webinars about um, grants available around property costs, uh, particularly small business rates release uh, and retail and hospitality release for certain types of businesses. And that's um, created significant benefit for a number of businesses already. And those grants have already been paid out by local authorities. But there were some gaps. Uh, there were some, uh, some groups of individuals who were not eligible under those rate reliefs. Um, and this is designed to try to meet those gaps. So it's a new pot of money, 617 million. That will try to give access to grants for those that have previously missed out. So examples up there, uh, shared and service space users, market traders, BNBs, have all talked to us from the network in the past about not being eligible, feeling it's unfair. This is a response to that. So again, good news, we think. Um, grants up to £25,000. As before, it will be funding that's allocated and distributed by local authorities, and it's at their discretion. So we expect local authorities will start issuing guidance shortly. They've only just been told of this cost of money, literally over the weekend. So we expect local authorities to react. So again, watch your space. We'll keep you updated on this. This, particularly with shared and service spaces, actually, we've had a lot of questions in from, from the network and from their clients about their feeling of just how unfair that was. So it's great to see something responding to that. We'll keep you informed of how that might work. But on the face of it, again, that's, that's good news. There are a lot of different announcements coming out on the other countries. So Scotland and Wales, they're announcing uh, different uh, funding as well. So again, it's best just to go to your local council and uh, look at what, what is available. Yeah, I, actually England are arguably being behind the curve. I think Scotland, Wales, Northern Ireland have had similar top-up schemes and plans in place for some time, yeah. but this is the first time we've seen it mentioned in, in England. Yeah. It's been a gap that's been acknowledged for some time, but it's good to see the funding coming up. And a quick update on furloughing. This all, this all seems... Um, a little yeah, in the distant past now, really, in a way. So we're now third week of claims window. Um, I won't say too much about it because that would be familiar for, for many of you. What I would say is the early reports about the scheme is working. Despite enormous numbers of applicants, it is working. Um, the guidance did come out and the calculations are complex. What we would say, as we've said before, for those of you that haven't yet made claims, the devil is in the detail of this, really. So do talk to your accountants. The claim process can be quite complex. Um, because of the calculations and guidance that underpin it. So just be aware that yes, the scheme is there, yes, it is working, but there are complexities. So again, talk to your accountants, look at the guidance we have on our website perhaps to see if you can help you. And come and talk to us if you're, we've heard some stories and we've seen it on some websites of accountants, they aren't actually supporting their clients through this time through uh, these claims. So do come and talk to us, it's something where we'd be more than happy to uh, start talking to you about. And the final one for me, and in some ways, the biggest frustration I think we've seen over the last few weeks is the realities for small company directors slash owners. Um, <clears throat> and the problem just for those of you that, that aren't aware, but I'm sure most of you are, 
The issue here is around furloughing and how it works and how small company directors use and paid or remunerated. So typically small salary, dividend top up, and furloughing works around the salary element, if at all, actually, because it is difficult for small company directors to truly furlough because of their connection with the business. <clears throat> Unfortunately, no further news on this. We, we keep hoping that we'll see some light at the end of the tunnel for what is quite a large grouping of people out there, hundreds of thousands. Um, the government had responded in the last week to a Treasury subcommittee report of a few weeks ago. That report highlighted exactly the same things we've been highlighting, the concerns for that group of, group of people. But they're still pushing back, saying effectively, not everyone can be funded. <clears throat> now that feels a little unfair, but that seems to be the line at the moment. We will will continue to apply pressure. Um, we we are representing our clients through surveys, as we'll come on to, through petitions, through letters to Chancellor. It does still feel very unfair to us, but that's where that grouping is at the moment, unfortunately. The only the only possible route that we can see, and it does come with a bit of a word of caution, as I mentioned earlier. If you're a company <clears throat> with distributable profits or maybe a direct loan account balance, could you use bounce back loans to fund directors, even in the short term? Possibly. It's not, it's not as per the, the scheme rules as such. It's not entirely uh, the purpose of the scheme. It's there to provide working capital to businesses and companies. But we can see people using it that way and arguing that that is the best way to protect the company. So, Again, another conversation with your accountant, probably, and looking at some of the details that's coming out over the coming weeks. But that's really the only a bit of hope we can offer. At the moment, it is still a question of petitioning and waiting for more news. And as, as we say, that will be highlighting the server results as we come on to. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's something we're going to keep pushing um, and keep supporting, for example, the hashtag Forgotten Limited movement that's occurred, which uh, is, a, is a wonderful movement supporting everyone who's getting affected by these gaps that are appearing. Um, so we'll continue to keep pushing those and identify different ways in which we can support that group. We've um, we launched a survey, which I'll go through in a second. We also launched a petition to uh, make sure this does get debated in Parliament. And so we'd, we'd recommend you, uh, we'll, we'll send you a link after this session, and we'd recommend you go on and support that. It's also being uh, supported by the hashtag Forgotten Limited uh, campaign as well so they're getting behind that petition and we're up to about 55,000 signatures so far so it's going well but we need more support so anyone you know spread the word get that message out there so that we can get this properly debated the government are aware of this they understand there's, there's difficulties in identifying how to support these businesses um, some question marks of over dividends and how they can be taken yeah, it, and, it, it, it is a difficult one because dividends because of the way dividends are declared because of the way dividends are reported it's very difficult for uh, hmrc to distinguish between dividends around a trade and other dividends that might be received so there's 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 <clears throat> there's very little they can do to deal with anti-avoidance issues and to stop people abusing the system and that's probably their main reason for for hesitating on this one we just think that's wrong and unfair because ultimately there are, there's a big group of entrepreneurial small business owners out there that are being penalised for no fault of their own. That can't be right. So we hope that common sense will be banned and we hope that some of this pressure that's being applied will be reflected in subsequent legislation. And we are seeing examples of that. The bounce back loans are an example of pressure. Some of the intervention around grant funding we've talked about, that's around pressure as well. So it, you know, it, it, it does work, but we need to make sure that our voices are heard and the petition is a great way of us doing that. But, you know, Small businesses are the, the backbone of the UK economy and we're all keen to support that and make sure we come out of this um, surviving and as strong as possible. So I'll just, um, I'll just walk through some of the survey results. We sent out a survey to our collective client base. We shared it on social media as well. And collectively, that was up to 77,000 small businesses, directors, self-employed professionals, landlords who completed these surveys. We wanted to keep it into that sort of self-employment uh, grouping there. And uh, we had an amazing response back. We had over 3,700 responses who went through that survey and gave us their feedback. We knew it'd be a hot topic. We knew there was a lot of concern out there. We probably knew that was the likeliness of those completing that survey were worried about you know, what the future may hold for them. But we're really delighted that we can bring all those responses together and push that message out, not just in the wider public, but also to government as well. 
Um, on the back of these responses, we're able to um, break it down and highlight some various uh, noise that we want to make in the press to raise your profile and be that collective voice. Our tagline you may not know is the small business champions and we believe it's our duty to live up to that tagline and push that message. So, so far we've had the following uh, national press coverage in the Times, that was our big one um, a week Monday. We are hoping for another piece specifically around the hashtag uh, Forgotten Limited and the directors that are being forgotten at the moment in another big uh, red top national. Um, so we just wait for confirmation of that one. So we're hoping to really raise a profile for you all as best we possibly can. And then you can see on screen, there's a number of the online publications that we've been uh, raising the profile and some other regional ones uh, as well to get that message across. From these survey results, um, we asked a number of different questions um, and we just pulled out a few that we thought were highly relevant to what's happening at the moment. Now this was from about two or three weeks ago. So uh, the concerns among, for example, as you can see there, the director group strongly disagree that the government have done enough to support you at this time. I don't think there were any big uh, surprises to come out of that survey result. Um, a worrying uh, stat that we saw was 91% were worried about lost income. So we gave people the opportunity to pick a number of different answers on this particular one. And uh, the hot one was uh, lost income. And then we also wanted to drill into um, when do you think that, that lost income will occur? Is it right away or are you talking about short term or longer term responses? Um, as you can say there, you know, businesses anticipating cash flow issues was very, very high. 79.7% were saying yes, they were worried about that. The, one of the interesting elements of, of the findings here is the timing of cash flow problems. As it shows on that slide, yes, there's some immediate cash flow issues. We know just how tough it's been for many out there. We've talked about directors, but certainly they're not the only group that's, that's struggling and suffering. Um, and loss of income is clearly going to be a concern. But what I think people are starting to recognise is, yes, there's that immediate challenge of funding, um, those gaps that the government is trying to fill in terms of um, the here and now. But actually what businesses are starting to look at, and it's particularly businesses doing this, they, they get their funding in place, let's say to the end of June for furloughing, um, loans in place, et cetera, et cetera. But what happens next? And that's where some of this longer term concern is coming out. It's, OK, where do we go from here? So we've got the funding in place but how does our business recover and, and how do we manage cash flow as we start to recover? So that's, that's going to become an ever more pressing need, I think, out there in terms of advice and support. And we can see it starting to build from this survey, which, as you say, is now a couple of weeks old, isn't it? And we'll see a category there, not sure how they're going to get affected because this was when a lot of the news was coming yeah. out and uh, the grants are still uh, being applied for. Uh, we also asked uh, the group, you know, are you going to put together a cash flow forecast? Now, we're keen to understand where people were. There was a big grouping, even within the survey results, which we'll send to you after the webinar, um, that had said, you know, they, they hadn't even approached their bank at this point in time. There's a lot of people, they just don't want to get into debt at this time. You know, just because they're losing customers doesn't mean they have to you know, start bank borrowing, they may have savings, they may just be waiting to see what's happening. So we just want to get a feel for who was looking to put together a cash flow forecast and really where we could fit in with that, you know, how could we help, how could we support, um, because it is an area of expertise as accountants, we used to put this together for our clients on a regular basis. So if it's something you are considering and you do want help with, do let us know, do get in touch through our channels on our website and uh, we'd be more than happy to help you with that. Yeah, it's worth bearing in mind, this isn't just about um, cash flows to support new debt, because that's often the perception, isn't it, that you produce a cash flow to help the bank. Actually, this is far more than that. This is cash flow to plan the future of the business. Uh, when do you take staff back? How do you start remunerating yourself? Looking ahead at what the business might do as it starts to recover. So I think now more than ever, this sort of cash flow planning is important. And I think we're starting to see evidence of that through the survey. So important to think about the future. And if you need to, to talk to the likes of us as accountants try and help you with that. Sometimes it can reduce down anxiety and stress if you can see a little bit more carefully yeah. into the future. I, I, yeah, I think where it becomes really interesting, we've got hopefully some announcements this week in terms of how things are going to start to get back to normal and how they start ratcheting down lockdown. I think once we see that and there's an idea of a planning place, 
that's when cash flow forecasting and planning comes to the forefront because we can look at how cash moves alongside those plans. So the next couple of weeks will be interesting, I think, in terms of how we start using this. Definitely. Definitely. Um, and then there's just a couple of things that we wanted to highlight. Now, we've, we've put out an awful lot of content around different opportunities that you have, different information that you, you can use to um, guide your business. And um, there was a small selection of people who completed our survey that said that they didn't know they had a couple of options here. One was the VAT deferral. So deferring your VAT payment, not your VAT return, but your VAT payment uh, until 2021. Uh, only a small percentage had said they weren't aware it was available, so we know that we need to keep communicating these messages out. Um, there's a good chunk of people obviously were aware, but they just didn't, chose uh, not to do it, or it just wasn't applicable to their business. Um, there's also the payments on account deferral as well, as a bigger grouping that weren't aware that this was an option to them. So there's a couple of interesting things that help us as well communicate and educate as many people as possible. As always, if you're really not sure, speak to your accountant um, and find out what, how they can help you and, and advise you at this point in time. Again, if you're, if you're owning a tax refund yeah. and you need to get self-assessment done sooner, you could start considering that. Again, if your accountant, they know your figures, they should be able to give you a feel for that. But otherwise, if you're really not sure, you know, do get in touch with us. Yeah, I think we were slightly surprised to see this. Um, this is all part of business and personal um, planning. Um, but it just goes to show it's confusing times. There's a huge amount of material out there. There's, there's new initiatives, there's new intervention, there's, there's a massive amount of detail to get to grips with. And we're working hard with our network to make sure we communicate that as best we can. But it, yeah, it is difficult to keep track of things. So uh, I think, um, yeah, worth bearing in mind that some of these things are available and certainly worth talking to your accountants if you feel it might be relevant to you. That's, you know, there's, there's some decent numbers there, aren't there? And it's all good cash flow support. Yeah, and there's a lot more advice on our website as well. well these, are, these are just two schemes that leaked out from yeah. us. There are other opportunities, other savings that you can make, other things that you can review uh, within your business at this time. So do go online to taxis.co.uk and go and have a look at that. Do you want to walk us through this last uh, yeah. session? We'll just wrap up. So I think we've talked about this as, as we've gone along. It is um, extraordinary times, exceptional times, and we understand that. Um, and actually, that's probably where accountants come to the fore in many ways. It is difficult to keep track of things. There is a lot out there, as I've said. Um, we've never known a period like it in terms of communication with our clients and with our network. Um, we have a huge amount of resource central to do that, but it's a difficult thing to do. So we, we try to get beneath the skin of the, of the legislation and the changes to really help you. So talking to your accountant gives you a, a chance to understand what this all means for you. Because it is about applying it to your circumstances. And as I said earlier, it's about key decisions in the future as well. Cash flow is part of it, understanding what's happening. Tax planning as well. There's, there's, there's good reason, perhaps, to accelerate calculating tax because it gives you some certainty in terms of what's happening. So those key decisions that may affect cash flow, we can perhaps help with. Furloughing claims is an example of a, an output from this intervention that needs support. And we, we've looked at, as a network, thousands and thousands of furloughing claims. As Jane says, an awful lot of the professionals just said, this is too difficult, we can't do that but we have intervened and supported our clients. Um, that's part of our role, we think, to help. Um, and it's not just us. We do try and link into others because we can do a huge amount as a network, but there are often examples where others may be useful. Employment lawyers is a good example there because that links into furloughing uh, because ultimately you're changing employment contracts. So really what we're here to do is help you understand, support you where needed, um, link you into good people where that's relevant for you and for us. And probably, if we're being honest, we're just there to talk to. Um, it is lonely being in business. You know, we're in business here. We've got a big team around us. It's great because we get a chance to catch up. Even, uh, even in times like these, we've got people to talk to and to support us. But small businesses don't always have that. So just having somebody you can refer to is fantastic. And that's often what our network are doing. So do talk to us. Even if it's just to discuss things quite broadly, we're always happy to have that conversation. So I think I'll probably summarise that. Um, I think, yeah, get in touch, speak to your accountant, uh, speak to your local tax list accountant, uh, and we'll do all we can to help. Um, what we'll probably do if we have time is to just have a look at some questions, because I think we've got a few that are coming, which might help bring some of this to life. So James, I'll just run through some of these that have been raised, if I said that. Yeah. So, um, question in fairly early on, so uh, from a Stephen. So if a company pays back its director's loans now, well before these funds arrive, would that be acceptable? Absolutely. 
if you've got cash in your if you've got cash in your company and you've got a loan account balance that is due to a director, you can pay that at any time. The reason lots of people haven't is they've been protected with cash. But, but directors' loan accounts usually represent taxed monies that are owed to you. So if you've got the money in the if you've got the money in the company, then yes, you can pay that back. That's acceptable. These new loans don't change that. They may give you cash to do it, perhaps, but they don't change that. Um, questioning from Simon: um, Will I have to pay any tax on my bounce back loan if I pay it off within a year? No, it's loan funding. You can repay it off early with no penalties, as we talked about. That's up to you. It's not taxable income. It's just a loan which you can pay back. Um, is the bounce back loan eligible? It's anonymous. Is the bounce back loan eligible for a business that established in August 2019? Yes, in theory. In theory, you would qualify because it's before the cutoff date, uh, 1st of March. You'd have to estimate 12 months of income or turnover, and you'd be limited to the 25% of that estimate. But yes, you can. Uh, another question from uh, Stephen, I think. Fixed property costs, does this mean companies working from home paying domestic rates? Um, no. Uh, no suggestion, Stephen, unfortunately, you can do that. This is really looking at uh, external property costs, like service office environments, for example, as we understand it. But you know, we'll keep looking. I doubt that they'll look at domestic uh, in that way for those working from home. There are some things you can claim. Well, you can, yeah, you, you can claim you can claim working from home allowance as a as a as a business owner as a legitimate business expense. So that's probably a question for your accountant. Um, and another point raised really um, disappointed to see when you bounce back loans pegged against turnover. Yeah, I agree. Bit unfair on new companies. I made the point myself. There seem to be a number of initiatives that penalise new businesses, actually. Um, some of the self-employment income support scheme has rules around calculation of losses and profits, which does penalise early stage businesses. It is unfair. Uh, the government would say there are always going to be groups missing out. In reality, it's probably because it's harder for HMRC to validate numbers. It doesn't feel fair. Perhaps there'll be some more short-term initiatives brought in. We'll have to, we'll have to keep looking at that. So I think that's it for questions. Um, we are... Um, we, we are, uh, as a network, you know, open to answer questions. I'm sure our accountants out there would love to help you if there are things that we haven't covered here. Yeah. Some, some more coming in. Some more coming in. Okay. Um, let's have a look. I'm a service company doing business in the UK. I think I just saw for a German company. I think the rules, if that's a question around bounce back loans, that's about having um, UK residency for tax purposes. So that's a bit of a technical point. So that's, that is one for your accountant. Uh, and can existing loans and credit cards be paid off? This is from William um, with a bounce back loan. Yes, as we understand it, William, that is the case. Existing debt can be restructured. If you compare 2.5% to whatever you may be paying, say, on credit card debt, yeah, that's significantly more attractive. We can see a lot of people doing that. Um, final question there. What happens if you only have a personal account? Can we claim any bounce back loan or business? Um, if, if, you're, if you're a business uh, that's eligible, you can claim a bounce back loan, but it's a business loan. Logically, if you've got a business, it would need to go into business account. So I think that's, that would be how it would work. But again, that's probably one piece of advice. Okay, come on. Uh, is that the BAT? So we pay VAT, corporation tax, and pay PAY, but still no grant. Um, <laughs> yes, there will be some out there that will miss out on this. That's from another scheme. Um, yeah, there will be some that miss out, unfortunately. We think that's unfair. In an ideal world, everyone would be covered in some way, shape, or form. We hope that as schemes come out and are cleared, they will start to fill some of those gaps. But Stephen, yes, we can understand some, some concern. There is um, constantly good news coming out all the time, but yeah. we're still waiting for these gaps to be filled in by the government. They're still trying to find how they fill in those gaps, but obviously as time goes on, it gets more and more difficult for directs of small limited companies, doesn't it? It, it? it does, it does, and we, we do understand that. I made the point earlier about our sympathies in that situation and us trying to do something about it. It's the biggest gap probably left, I would say. And one point there from Sue, which is quite useful. Um, so Sue, you had a look on the British Business Bank website this morning for the lenders participating in the scheme. Of those listed at the time, all were saying that only existing account holders with them are eligible. Do you think this is likely to change? That's a good point, actually. We've seen the same. Technically, for the rules, if your existing lender isn't uh, providing a scheme, 
then you can go elsewhere. If you can go elsewhere, then logically those providers can take uh, those with a non-existing client. So we think that the lenders have been encouraged to take effectively all comers. Doesn't surprise me they're prioritizing their existing clients first, but I think they'll be under pressure to take others because that's how the scheme has been devised by government. So I think, so yes, that will change. You mentioned this before, your existing bank's gonna have a lot more information about you yeah. saying there's less checks to do perhaps? Possibly, or? but I think that it's wrong of them to limit it to only existing account holders. That's not what they've been told to do in the letter. The chance to send a letter to all the banks over the weekend which told them effectively not to do that. So we, let's hope the banks broaden that out a little bit over time. Yeah. Um, it's, it's evolving quickly today, so we'll see how that one moves soon. Yeah. Okay, um, oh, a question there from Chris. Can I use my BBL to pay last year's corporation tax? It's a debt of the, it, it's a debt of a company. It's, it's corporation tax, it's a company, Chris. It's a debt of the company. It can be used to restructure debt. If you take it at face value, then yes, it can be. That's restructuring debt effectively on your balance sheet. So I would say that's within the spirit of the rules as they've been set out. That yeah, that should be an opportunity for you. Thank you okay. Um, uh, final question I think from John. That was like the last one. Uh, can previous years be taken into account? Last year was a bad one for me. John, you haven't made it clear what that means. I'm if that's turnover, um, then it does look like it's just 2019. At the moment, it's limiting it to just that year per the guidance. So if, you meet, if you're referring to turnover, then it, it, it would just be that year. If you're referring to the self-employment income support scheme, that's an average over three years. So hopefully a single bad year wouldn't be, wouldn't be that disastrous in terms of your claim. Okay, Darren, thank you very much. Thank you for, um, for answering uh, all of our questions. Um, we just move the slides along a couple. Thank you. Um, so yeah, thank you very much for all of your um, attendance. And we, we're constantly updating our clients and constantly updating our COVID business support hub. So please, please do go and check that out. We're on socials, of course, at Texas UK. If you want to be added to our email newsletter, then the moment we're aware of these announcements, we're putting together um, our understanding of it, and then we're emailing out our, our um, quite a sizable mailing list. Please do email to us hello at taxes.co.uk and we'll be more than happy to add you to that list with your permission and uh, you can receive those updates straight into your inbox and be really clued up on this. Um, on top of this Darren's also recording videos from time to time and we'll be doing a recording of this webinar. So again if there's anyone you know who is a neighbour or a friend who also runs their own business and is worried and struggling like yourself then um, please do share all of our content. We'll be more than happy to help out um, and spread the, as much support as we possibly can. But thank you for listening today. Uh, we very, very much appreciate it and stay safe. Thank you. Thank you.